Google may have just announced the brand new Pixel 4a XL, but if you own a Pixel 3a XL and you're thinking of upgrading, hold that thought. Replacing the battery will only take you about 30 minutes, and when you're done, you'll have a phone that works just like new. For this repair you'll need an eye opener, a suction cup, a set of iFixit opening picks, tweezers, a spudger, a T3 Torx screwdriver, some isopropyl alcohol, and your replacement battery. To begin this repair, we first need to remove the display by cutting through the adhesive holding it in place. For reference, you can see the thin strips of adhesive lining the sides of the display and thicker strips along the top and bottom edges. In the next steps, we'll be inserting an opening pick underneath the display to begin separating it from the body of the phone. The Pixel 3a XL has two seams, one for the display and one for the midframe. Make sure you're inserting your pick into the display seam. Place the suction cup along the right-hand side of the screen, just underneath the volume button. While pulling up on the suction cup strongly to create a small gap, insert the edge of an opening pick at a slight downward angle between the screen and the plastic body of the phone. Watch your angles. Inserting the pick horizontally can separate the glass from the OLED panel. If you feel your pick hitting anything, don't go any further. You may be hitting the OLED display, and we don't want to damage that. Once you've inserted your pick, slide it up and down the side of the phone to cut the adhesive. Keep in mind during this whole process, we don't want to insert the opening pick between the display and the glass. To be safe, don't insert your opening pick more than a few millimeters into the phone on any edge. If you encounter any strong resistance, heat up your eye opener following its directions, and place it on the phone for a few minutes to heat up and soften the adhesive. Hang on to that eye opener if you've started using it. The adhesive along the top and bottom edges is thicker and stronger than on the sides. Heat up the eye opener now and place it along the top edge of the phone. Once the top edge is nice and hot, gently slide the pick along the top edge. Take extra precautions while sliding the pick here, but the camera and proximity sensor are housed in this region and we don't want to damage them. When you've safely made it to the opposite corner, slide the pick carefully down the left-hand side of the phone. The bottom adhesive is just as tough as the top, so reheat that eye opener and start warming up the bottom strip of adhesive. Carefully slide the pick around the lower left edge and across the bottom remembering to not insert the pick more than a few millimeters deep. Once you've made it all the way around the phone with your pick, the screen should be fully separated, but don't try and remove it just yet. There's a cable attached to the back of the display which is connected to the motherboard, and we need to disconnect that first. Lift the screen by its top edge and flip it 180 degrees so the front of the display is laying on the open phone. Remove the tape covering the display connector bracket and then remove the two T3 Torx screws holding the bracket on. Remove the bracket and then use your spudger to disconnect the cable. Your display is free. There are a total of 15 screws holding the midframe in place and while they are all T3 Torx screws, they're not all the same. Make sure to keep them organized with something like our magnetic mat. To remove the midframe, we'll start by inserting a pick into the midframe seam at the bottom of the phone and sliding it along the bottom edge to release the clips. Once those are released, slide the flat edge of an opening pick up the right side and the left side of the phone to release the clips there. Lift the bottom edge of the midframe up slightly, but not all the way. There's a fragile cable at the top edge of the phone we need to disconnect before we can lift it all the way off. While lifting the midframe, use the spudger to disconnect the proximity sensor cable in the upper right hand corner of the phone. Now the midframe can lift right off. To remove the battery, we first need to disconnect some cables, starting with the battery's cable. Once that's disconnected and there's no more power running to the rest of the phone, we can safely disconnect the remaining three cables that are connected along the top edge of the battery. The thick interconnect cable in the middle can be completely removed, so disconnect the bottom end and remove it. The battery is secured by two adhesive strips. The first strip's pull tab can be found on the bottom right-hand corner of the battery. The second can be found in the upper left corner of the battery. To remove these strips, first use tweezers to grab the black pull tab. Then grab the pull tab with your fingers and very slowly pull the strip away from the battery. The strip will stretch to many times its original length, so just keep pulling. If you're unlucky and your strip breaks, don't worry. Just use your fingers or blunt tweezers to retrieve the remaining length of adhesive and continue pulling. 
If there's no way to access the remaining strips, move on to the next strip. If that one breaks as well, you can use a little isopropyl alcohol underneath the battery to dissolve the remaining adhesive. Once the strips are removed, use an opening pick to lift the battery up and out. Now we just need to install our new battery. If your replacement battery didn't come pre-installed with adhesive, reapply new strips in the same orientation the old strips were placed. The upper pull tab should be on the opposite side of the battery connector, and the bottom pull tab should be on the same side as the connector. Remove the protective strips covering the adhesive and place the battery into the phone. Press the battery down to secure it in place. Reconnect all the cables that you previously disconnected, saving the battery connector for last. Position the midframe so that the proximity sensor cable is over its connector, and then use the spudger to press it into place. Lower the midframe and press it into place, making sure all the clips engage with the body of the phone. Screw in the 15 screws that secure the midframe, making sure they all go back into the same holes they came from. If you're reinstalling your existing display, you'll need to prep it for new adhesive. To begin, use some tweezers or your spudger to remove the large chunks of adhesive from the back of the panel and the midframe. Then use some isopropyl alcohol to thoroughly clean where the old adhesive was. Once it's clean, reapply your new adhesive. Lay the display face down on the phone so that its cable connector is pointed towards the bottom of the phone. Then lift that cable up and press it into its socket to reconnect it. Replace the cable bracket, and then secure it with the two screws we removed earlier. Before you re-adhere your display, make sure everything is working as it should. Nothing ruins a repair, like finding out something doesn't work after you've glued it shut. Remove any adhesive backing, and then flip the display over and press it into place. After you're satisfied with the seal, put the phone under a couple of heavy books for 30 minutes or so to help the adhesive bond. To ensure your new battery performs the best it can, we recommend calibrating it after your installation is complete. To do this, simply discharge your new battery to below 10%, then charge it uninterrupted back to 100%. That's it, you're done.